Today we're going to do one of my favorite flooring methods for the bottom floor of our room box. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy and inexpensive this is to do. All right, so our floor in our bottom layer of our of our room box can be glued to in and I'm going to show you one of my favorite methods of doing a floor and it involves a piece of very inexpensive poster board I know you can't really see much there uh, so the first step and this time I'm actually putting the wallpaper paste same wallpaper paste we've been using I'm going to brush it all over this floor you want to make sure you have a really good solid layer. Um, you don't want to miss any spots because if you miss it's going to bubble and don't worry if you get a little bit up on the walls as long as it's really low on the walls. We are going to put a wood molding all the way around our floor so around the um, where the wall meets the floor so that will be covered. So when I think I've got this completely covered, and I see I'm gluing cat hair in here, that's just wonderful. Not sure if that's where the camera is showing or not. Make sure you have a good coverage. Kind of move your head around so you make sure you can see it. And then I've got, this is an 11 by 14 inch piece of poster board. And this is from the dollar store. They have some packages of poster board. One day when I went in, I needed, my son needed a piece of poster board for a project. And they had 11 by 14 sheets, five sheets for a dollar. And this is one of those sheets. So that's on. I'm going to put a ceramic tile and a weight on this and let it get completely dry. And when this is dry, we can come back and make it look like something other than a piece of white poster board. All right, now we're getting to really awkward angles here, but the floor is now dry and it's flat. I left the tile on it for about 12 or 18 hours, and then I took the tile off and let it finish drying. It's a little warped, but we can fix that later. We'll just wait down this corner later, and then I trimmed it off even with the edge. So now we're going to make this look like it's not white poster board. So let me reorient the, ca the uh, camera. I'll show you what I've got set up here to paint with. I'll try and change my lighting too so this will be more visible. And uh, we'll move on. All right, so first I was going to show you. This is my big container of stuff. So let's look at the paints I've got. I have this flesh tone paint. I have an ivory, white ivory paint. I have a, what is this, burnt sienna, I have a bittersweet orange, Santa's flesh, empire gold, cocoa, terracotta, yellow, sandstone, and finally, what is this, golden brown. Now I'm not sure I'm going to use all of those. I probably will, but that will depend on how things go. I also have these metallic paints that I bought a couple years ago. I'm going to use just a little bit of one or two of those to apply our paints. I have some regular kitchen sponges, cheap ones from Dollar Tree, some cosmetic wedges, some other cosmetic sponges that I got at Big Lots. There's a couple of different textures there. And then I have cotton balls. So we are going to start putting the paint on our floor. Now I have lots of colors. In this case, more is better. If you are using a wallpaper with a design, I recommend picking out darks and lights of the different colors in your wallpaper. I wanted to keep this kind of a warm neutral. So that's the colors I chose this time. Let's see, what do I have? I have two, four six, eight, ten. I have eleven colors. I recommend you have at least five. So let me get set up and we'll put on the first part of the paint. All right, so I've put out three colors of paint. The ivory, the 
burnt sienna and the golden brown onto my tile and I've cut some pieces of the sponge. This is going to be our first go round with the paint. And what we're going to do, and this is going to look like a hot mess. Um, just you have to be okay with that. Until we are done at a lot of points, we're going to look at this and say, oh my god, I've ruined my floor. But on the bright side, even if you do, you just glue another piece of tag board or poster board over it. All right, so I have pounced. And on these first coats, being kind of regular doesn't matter. Later on, we're going to want to um, make sure we're working a lot more randomly. I like to make sure there's at least some dark colors in my floor as well as some really light colors and keep pouncing with that sponge until you run out of paint. This is just our first of multiple coats. We are going to be going over this repeatedly and try and get all the way to the corner. It's okay if you get a little paint on the very bottom, try not to do what I just did there and get up on the wall, but that's okay, we can fix it. I think what I will do later is bring in a post and post it notes and put along the wall so I protect my wall a little bit. I'm just going to keep pouncing this until I run out of paint and then I'm going to give this some time to dry and then I'll come back and we'll do another coat. isn't really going to look like any specific thing. It's just, it's one of my favorite ways to do a floor. And I've been on this type of floor in several dollhouses and I always love it when it's done. Okay, that's about all we're going to do on this coat. I'm going to go wash my sponges out and when this is dry, I'll be back and we'll put some more paint on. All right, so our earlier paint is all dry and yeah, it looks horrible right now. That's kind of the point of why I want to show this to you every step of the way because I want you to see just because it turns out really cool in the end it looks like a hot mess in the middle. So I've got three more colors of paint out on my tile which is where the camera can't pick it up but I've got terracotta yeah there's the camera play where's the camera I've got light ivory and I've got this uh, flesh tone and this time I'm going to use three of these makeup sponges I'm going to dab it in this is a totally different texture than we had on the last one. And I usually work three colors at a time, three different colors at a time. It's a slightly bowed on the bottom, so it's rocking. Try and keep it from rocking. Get the flesh color. That was the uh, terracotta. Get the flesh tone. My goal over about three batches or maybe four batches of the paint is going to be to have every bit of the white covered. Oops, I just dipped that in the wrong paint. That's okay. Let's get some of the um, ivory in there. In these first couple of batches, I'm putting the, my lightest color, my ivory, in every time. As we get more layers, I probably won't do that. Now 
Now this sponge, because it's much smaller texture, we have a much more solid looking bit. But because we are sponging on until the paint is all gone, and I'm going over spots until they kind of blend out. Let's get want some of that terracotta over in here. Hopefully I'm not, this is not pouncing up and down enough to uh, make the camera look like it's, you know, like we're getting seasick or anything, but I just think it's important for you guys to see that how this comes together every step of the way. And if you wash these sponges, they'll last for a while, um, but they're cheap. All the applicator products I'm using here are incredibly cheap, so you can just go for it. I forgot to bring my um, post-it note I was going to bring to put along the sides. I need to do that. But that's okay. We'll cover that up with a molding. We'll just put a wider baseboard. I'm going to get some more of the, off, the ivory color, and then I think we're going to call this good until this dries. While I am mixing each layer, each batch of, so far of three colors each layer, I don't want to mix the next layer into that. I get more depth by having it them each separate. So that, I think, is where we're going to stop this time. I'm going to go wash my sponges out, let this dry, and when I come back, we'll do another coat. All right, so this this is pretty much dry. It might be a little damp, but this time I've gotten out some yellow. This bittersweet orange. I'm really anxious to try this. And this sandstone. And this time I'm going to use cotton balls. It's going to give a different texture. I want different textures. I want different colors. And yeah, this is kind of bright, but I'm not going to use a lot of it. This is one of those floors that in real life, if you spill on it, you'll never know. <laughs> and because it's the brighter colors, why one of the reasons I'm using the cotton ball. Because it will make a much lighter impression. Much airier. Alright, now let's get a cotton ball for that orangey color. I love that. But I don't want as much. Now I'm going to get the sandstone color. I'm doing it last because it will tone down this layer by kind of blending with these colors that are still wet. That's a little too heavy there, but... And you can use other things. You could use a piece of terry cloth. You, you know, like a towel or a corner of a towel. You could use paper towels. You can use whatever you've got that you think would be fun to do texture with. Play with different things. What's the worst that can happen on this? You either put more layers of paint on or you glue down another piece of poster board and start over. It's not a big deal. You're not doing something that's expensive. This is a good place to just play. Right. A little more of this beigey color around, and this needs to dry again. And when this is dry, I'll come back and we'll put some more colors on. All right, so that's dry now, and this time we're only going to use two colors. We're going to use the Santa's flesh and the ivory. And I've got these bigger cosmetic sponges, and instead of breaking them, I'm going to fold them up like this. Refold it as you work. I keep 
forgetting to bring out the uh, post-it notes. I'm going to be all done before I remember that. And I'm pouncing on my work tile, on my little ceramic tile, before I um, come onto the floor. Now I'm going to take the bigger sponge. Again, I'm going to kind of bring it up in a ball-like shape. That way I don't have any sharp edges. It's not wanting to stay. And I'm kind of dabbing and rolling. was way too thick that I did there on that last color. So I think I'm going to have to do something with that. That little bit of obviously spilt way too much paint there. There, kind of work it back in, blend that edge. There, I'm going to let this dry, which really it's only taking a 5, 10, 20 minutes for these paint layers to dry. When this is dry, I'll come back and we'll put some more color on. All right, I'm really happy with how this is coming out so far. And I've got this Luminaire metallic gold. I'm going to just put just a little bit of that in. Just, just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. And I'm trying to be random and I'm trying to be a very light touch with this because this is the type of thing that could go very wrong very quickly. Well, I'm going to let this dry now overnight and tomorrow we will look at it. Probably want to get a little more color right along the edges and then I think it'll be ready for its clear coat. So. Let's let it dry overnight and get a look at it in the morning. All right, so the paint is all dry. I had planned to go around the edges, but we had no electricity all day yesterday, so I am running really, really late. So I'm just gonna put my clear finish on. I'm gonna use a Mod Podge. I've got a satin one here, and I like to use a foam brush when I'm doing this because I don't get brush marks at all then. So you just put on, I'm sure everybody out there has put on Mod Podge at least once. It's a great product. Um, the lower the shine level, the less apt it is to remain sticky. It is one of the problems with Mod Podge. Is a lot of times it will remain tacky after it dries. All right, there's the first coat. I will let this dry and decide off camera if it needs a second coat. If it needs a second coat, I'll go ahead and do that. And when I'm done with the coats finish, I will come back and we'll look at this all done. 
All right, so this is two coats of Mod Podge, and I think it looks great. It has dried to a non-tacky finish, which is good. Um, there are ways to get around the tacky finish if your gloss Mod Podge does dry that way. But I think next week we will put the base molding around our room, and then we'll move up to the top floor and finish the floor up there. I hope you enjoyed this process. Be sure and check the blog post. Be sure and find me on Facebook, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.